Hi guys, it's Claire Nocti. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be exploring the cosmic mysteries of Swati Nakshatra and how this Nakshatra and its shocking archetypal patterns manifest in our modern world. So stay tuned for brand new research on Swati natives, their case studies, their artwork, and more. All interwoven together to bring new life, verification, and tangibility to the traditional ancient associations of this Nakshatra. And I hope that this presentation will give you a first-hand experience of Swati so that you can recognize its energies within and around you in the future. Swati is the second Rahu rolled nakshatra, which is the north node in Vedic astrology, and it's located fully in the Venus rolled Libra Rashi. The combination of Rahu and Venus immediately sheds some light onto this nakshatra, and that we will see as we go that Swati is completely immersed in the process of Rahu that relates to the projection of consciousness into matter, but then this nakshatra ties to actually immersing one's senses into these projections for pure enjoyment as well as for experiential playful learning. You will see that Swati's primary realms of influence are the illusory simulations all around you, the Maya that pulls you in and tempts you to enjoy her all the time. First I'm going to go through some traditional associations, deities associated with Swati, so that as we're going through the more modern examples um, in the video, you'll be able to refer back to those in your mind and understand how those are playing out in our world today. Swati is ruled by the god Vayu, the god of Prana, whose bija is Yam, the syllable of the heart center. This is why this nakshatra has always been associated with pranayama. So learning how to control your prana and everything that you can do with prana and the regulation of the breath. Which is why this nakshatra is really associated with people who train in martial arts, but also with hypnotism and casting illusions, because the control of prana is a key consideration in the artful projection of energy. The sound of the heart and prana amongst the shakti bijas, and so from a more feminine perspective, is the hrim bija, which is also the maya illusion. Bija. Hreem is also associated with light and space and its deity is Bhuvaneshwari. And the Shakti Bijas are the more practical side relating to use and to the goddess form. So Hreem compared to Yam relates to the use of prana and space and light to hypnotize, to cast illusion, and even to delude. Bhuvaneshwari's name means a combination of an embodiment of all that holds us, all that contains us. Bhuvana Ishwari meaning goddess of the worlds, where the worlds are the tri Bhuvana or the three regions of Bu, which is Earth, Buva, which is the atmosphere, and Sfa, which is the heavens. Bhuvaneshwari is the use of space and energy to contain specific, intricate, nourishing, and tempting illusions, which is what sustains and supports our universe. She represents the space-holding potential for the matrix of all objects and environment, the primal matter of space, which all other elements are actually just condensed forms of. Heaven. of her body being Maya, the energy that as prana is the nourishing element of space, Swati natives hold a special cosmic position in being projectors and enjoyers of illusion in this reality, which is what makes them so badly want to kind of transcend this illusions and the restrictions of this reality to immerse their senses and their own personal desired projections, always being in control of what they immerse their senses in, and you'll see that more as we go. Hreem is both the Maya Bija and the Sun Shakti Bija, ruling the heart center. Sun um, being the planet that Rahu eclipses and to delude you project your energy outwardly in the form of light in that all perception is essentially just interaction with your own projections on physical reality and in dreams for example our own projections fully come to life and animate everything that we're experiencing which understanding that is why it said that spiritual adepts prefer the dark because in the dark you can see your own light and you aren't placed under the illusory light of any other influence so 
Swati relates to the realization of your individual projections on reality around you and how to project the energy in prana and immerse the senses in a way that brings ultimate enjoyment and alignment for the individual, which is why this star is the self-goer. They are kind of masters of projecting their own universe within this one and hypnotizing and pulling people's energy into it and then entertaining, teaching, and nourishing them as well as um, to learn themselves through this kind of play and immersion and illusion. Ultimately though, Bhuvaneshwari teaches you to awaken from the grand illusion that she is and realize the potential of your own light from her Shakti, Nana Shakti, the power to know, and to create your own individuated star. Punavasu is the nakshatra of Aditi who also relates to space and Swati and Punavasu are similar in that they're the two outlier Chara, the movable nakshatras other than the cluster of three that are together and they have a lot of similarities regarding space holding potential and I'll explore their similarities more in my video on wealth which is coming soon. Punarvasu and Aditi are the nourishing space of this specific universe in that we are all participating in this grand illusion we did not create which is supported by the mechanism of the Hreem Bija which is Maya. However, Hreem is also a mechanism that any individual can use and the cosmic Swati position is the act of doing this. This mechanism allows any being to create a universe with the prana and life force and can help beings within these mini created universes within this one as it relates to the actual magical power of maya and illusion that anyone can wield for good or bad it's the act of creating a private reality which others can actually verify such as a video game where you've influenced the perception of yourself or another through your own will and so that simulation or illusion in itself also becomes real in the sense of being alive in the memories and senses of others even if not real in physical reality. The power of Swati in a positive sense, as you'll see in the sense of waking up to the grand illusion of our universe, is that the most skilled, intricate, and convincing Swati illusions and mini-universes created become so real and engage all the senses in the mind that you actually wake up to the maya of this reality. In a negative sense, this power of Swati and Kareem can be entrapping others in false mini-universes, where they're removed from the true life force. In the Devi Gita, Bhuvaneshwari outlines a spiritual practice that leads to complete self-realization and says that you can use Hreem alone to achieve it and that it's a supreme guide. If you understand the secrets of Maya, you're no longer deluded, but you're in touch with your own stars. So this immense space-holding potential is why I have explained in previous videos that Swati Nakshatra is a nakshatra of ultimate yin energy, being, for example, the debilitation point of the yang sun and relating to prana and space, and that can be shown in astrological physiognomy by the way that this next chapter more than any other when dominating tends to give the natives very prominently hypnotic eyes that are receptive oftentimes large or very wide set and feminine in nature these types of eyes in traditional medicine are indicative of a vast amount of internal space holding potential um, the desire to absorb light and so a ton of magnetism encouraging others to pursue and pour energy into them encouraging others to bathe in this attractive illusion that is our world and to enjoy their senses. This is the opposite of the effect that yang signs give, which I've shown in my videos on physiognomy and will expand on more soon, that tend to create more narrow, hooded eyes, showing that they are more outward in nature, uninterested in receiving light or casting illusion, more fixated on penetrating through illusion than immersing their senses in it. Swati being the enjoyer of the material senses, who eventually seeks to individuate from it due to desire to create their own illusions, has natives which are embodiments of this energy on earth encouraging others to explore and immerse in this grand, vast, expanding illusion. This ties to why Saraswati is in some ways associated with this nakshatra, such as being worshipped during this nakshatra due to her name meaning the ocean of your own experience. Swa meaning one's own, Ti meaning the personification or embodiment, and Sara meaning ocean, allowing you to derive knowledge from the ocean of your own experiences and projections, which is why her Shakti Bija is I'm, which is the Bija of the Guru. That your true Guru is essentially the ocean of your own experience. We're all projecting a ton of um, our reality as we go all of the time and control over projecting it relates to Swati and Saraswati becoming the master of your own projections and the master of your own senses. That final knowledge of being the god or goddess of your own universe is the knowledge of Sri Vidya which relates to Tripura Sundari and 
Matangi, who is the tantric form of Saraswati. And Matangi is the minister of Tripura Sundari because these forms like Saraswati and Matangi, they give you the power from the knowledge that comes from the ocean of your own experiences. This idea of space and prana as the potential void for growth also ties to the mysteriously expanding energy in the universe that is the principle of the more mysterious yin, being things like dark energy, these forces that constantly expands our universe. One of the most influential astronomers of all time, Edwin Hubble, has Swati as his moon placement. This very theory of the universe's expanding nature was first observationally confirmed by Hubble, which became known as the Hubble constant, and later became the Big Bang Theory, which he called his hypothesis of the primeval atom, or the cosmic egg. So literally the study of the expansive yin energy of our universe, like studying Bhuvaneshwari directly, came from the Swati moon native. <laughs> Cosmic egg theory shows that it is not that galaxies are moving away from one another, but it is actually that the universe is like a big balloon expanding to a greater and greater size through more and more space being mysteriously created between the galaxies, which is what led to the concept of the Big Bang Theory. It's interesting that Hubble called his theory the cosmic egg, inspired by many world mythologies that viewed the universe and creation this way because the symbol really ties to Swati, which I'll explore now. Bhuvaneshwari essentially created the three forms of the Tridevas and then gave Gave each one one of her shaktis. She gave Saraswati to Brahma and they created the cosmic egg that is then split, fashioned into the universe, sustained, and eventually destroyed. Swati ties fully to this archetypal idea of the cosmic egg and its space holding potential like the holder, the borders, and matrix of our universe. Even in the modern world this cosmic egg and the egg symbol of potential in general is contemplated by in art and associated in mysteriously interesting and almost funny ways with Swati native all around you. Lady Gaga, who has Swati Moon hatching out of an egg at the Grammys, Swati Moon Bjork wearing a swan dress to the Oscars and dropping eggs on the red carpet. And they say back then our universe was a cold black egg. Kylie Jenner with Swati Moon being overtaken by an egg for the most liked photo on Instagram and then associated with eggs and a lot of memes and things like that following that event. Swati natives like Katy Perry and Kelly Osbourne literally wearing egg outfits. The symbol of the black egg or circle with small dots of many colors is often used as the representation of Akasha, the unifying energy of creation, and many associate this with prana, although there are distinctions between them. A side note from Western occultism is that a remedial bija for Swati is Lam, Indra's bija, which is the name of a large-headed alien that appeared to a prominent Western occultist and said it's all in the egg and immediately the occultist called it his guru and this is one of the first images depicting the modern day grays that everyone sees. Others who have meditated on the head afterwards claim that it sucks you into this black void and you realize that the head of this common astral vision contains the entire universe and thus it's like the Akasha Tatwa and relates too to these internally spacey women with big almost alien eyes and the mini universes that they create that I will explore now. Because Hreem is capable of deceiving and hypnotizing all of the senses, it really has power over the moon and is said to heal the moon, which is the planet that rules the senses and also the planet that rules the masses. So the masses are really under the power of the moon. The idea is that every universe has an Indra or every world has an Indra who represents the sense organs of the cosmic man that we dwell in. So it's essentially the idea that there are different Indras for different universes and the mechanism that he uses to make people deceived or unable to clearly see 
the truth of reality is this spacious cream and this is why it's described as sustaining and nourishing because if you're not able to be under the illusion of this universe you can't identify with a body in it and you disappear back into the void swati's energies help us to wake up to the mysteries of this vast space-filled universe edwin hubble was also the one who actually introduced the world to the concept of there being different galaxies than our own so he greatly greatly expanded our concept of the impossible to comprehend vast of this universe. This parallels a myth of Bhuvaneshwari that she blessed the Tridevas, that she showed Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva millions of universes each, all in the sheen of just her toenails. Some of these universes were getting created by Brahma, some getting sustained by Vishnu, while others getting annihilated by Rudra. And with that, Bhuvaneshwari enlightened the Tridevas with her greatness. She opens you to realize the vastness of this illusion and your small position within it. There are many, many universes, and that even if this one fades out that there's other ones that are starting fresh right now and there's an infinite number of them and they're just constantly in this never-ending cycle of birth and death and for this reason she relates to contemplation of this atmosphere this environment that we're all contained within and swati's energies have initiated many discoveries there first of all you can find swati's influence heavily in the charts of directors and actors in films about space exploration or extraterrestrials as a kind of personification of the unknown vastness as i'll show examples of as we continue because swati natives are naturally inclined to contemplating these mysteries of this expansive universe Then, just as Swati Moon Edwin Hubble discovered other galaxies and the Big Bang Theory observationally and the world's most well-known telescope is named after him, even within our own solar system, Swati's influence led to the discovery of each of the outer planets. For Neptune, it was discovered when Moon was in Swati, conjunct Rahu. For both Uranus and Pluto, Moon was in Libra, in Vishaka, Nakshatra, conjunct K2 in Swati. So essentially, Swati being the space and K2 channeling and unlocking the truth behind it. Vishaka Shaka Nakshatra as the moon placement in those last two examples being kind of the remover of the errors or deception in the vision that we're concealing these aspects of the universe because Vishaka is the poison vessel, the function of the poison vessel being to hold all of your involuntary projections of energy which relate to the poison of Rahu. So whatever illusion you're creating and enjoying in Swati can essentially turn bad if you begin to become diluted by your creation and involuntary projections of energy and it becomes like a bad trip. So while Swati is the whole mechanism behind how you project your energy, which is why prana is kind of like the magic force and the gateway of all of the other senses and you do that for your enjoyment but if it goes wrong the shaka is the insurance that follows it's like oh your involuntary projections can get held in this vessel which is the role essentially of a spiritual practitioner's wife and thus why these two nakshatras are in libra and they both have to do with marriage and regulation of energy because saturn is exalted here Naturally, this contemplation of the vast universe is like a meditation on scale and its relativity, an awakening that each small or large thing functions kind of as, a, as its own universe. From considering the little universe of a video game or a computer program or the television, to the universe of the womb or the universe of the home or the classroom, all the way to this type of contemplation we've been talking about of the observable universe and even what may lie beyond the observable universe, the many things theories and contemplations such as that maybe we're all in a simulation, maybe we're all in the literal mind of a greater being, or maybe our whole universe is just the size of a speck of dust within another universe. In our modern world, this contemplation on Maya often takes the form of a ton of interest in technology and how um, technology so closely mimics reality and allows one to explore these vast possibilities of energetic projections to either create many universes or always be in control of what kind of reality you are immersing your senses in, what your projecting outward into. So prana brings life to all of the other senses. Without breath, all of the other senses shut off very quickly. And so it's like a gateway for all of our senses and for life. And Swati natives find the idea of controlling the senses through creation or immersion in false environments or simulations, kind of like a form of hypnosis, through video games or even virtual reality, to be highly interesting. A whole virtual universe. People come to the oasis for all the things they can do. 
but they stay because of all the things they can be. Reality. Is real. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. So the monotony is kind of getting to me. I've been driving a train for the past few hours. Not seeing the sun set or rise. I've taken to games like Skyrim to experience the night. Loaded up a beach environment and rode my thoughts away. I then calmed my mind in the hills of China. Not only is Swati prominent with um, many that you would associate with gaming, like for example, it's PewDiePie's sun placement. Ah, what the hell? Go, 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 go! Ah! But in searching for top video game designers, the first list of five people that came up was shocking. Three out of five of those people had Swati Moon. One out of five had Libra Vishaka Moon, but with Shadabahisha the Trine Rahu sign as a sun placement. And the final one had Swati Sun. And you can also see this with Swati Moon native Bjork as well, who initially wanted to create a traveling house, another type of um, stimulating environment that I'll touch on soon, um, that people would enter to experience sensorially her album Biophilia. But when she realized that that wouldn't really be possible, she instead made an app of a video game to go along with the album and really immerse your senses in the songs. You can see that Swati natives are really, really dominating in the field and art of video game and video game design. Because Swati has some deep sense that all of reality is an illusion anyway and are very caught up in their own projections and enjoying those and allowing others to enjoy those and opening up the possibilities to different ways you can stimulate your senses. They aren't very caught up in passivity to the, the earth and the universe in which we are dwelling. They aren't weighed down by a concepts like go out in nature. They will enjoy nature, but they don't limit their senses to it by any means. They don't care to halt the growth of technology, but are more immersed in the movement of people advancing it and making it scarily similar to reality and more immersed in contemplating the power that means for humanity's potential for creation. So too can we use technology to make visible much of nature's invisible world. In Biophilia, you will experience how the three come together. Nature, music, technology. Now, forget the size of the human body. Remember that you are a gateway between the universal and the microscopic. The unseen forces that stir the depths of your innermost being and nature who embraces you and all there is. We are on the brink of a revolution that will reunite humans with nature through new technological innovations. To a Swati native, all that is really real to them is whatever their senses are experiencing at the time. You'll see that that relates to their kind of natural understanding that dreams are illusory and video games are illusory, but essentially life is also illusory. So running around in a VR forest where they can control um, what they're experiencing or create what they're experiencing is more interesting to them oftentimes than actually being in a real forest. Cream is the bija of hypnotism called Samohan in tantric rituals. When you play VR or you watch TV or you immerse yourself in any illusion for pleasure, this is the mechanism behind what makes it enjoyable and what makes it feel like you gained something from that experience. And in that way, even doing something like using a VR headset can be like an initiation which relates to Swati. When all of your senses acclimate to the headset and the memory seems almost like real, it's kind of a wake up to the illusory nature of our own reality, which is in itself much like a dream or a simulation. It's possible that a simulation is one day going to be inevitable, that we're going to have something that's indistinguishable from regular reality. This is real? When I touch that it feels wood, very real. Have you ever had a dream, Neo, that you were so sure was real? What if you were unable to wake from that dream? How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? This can't be. Be what? Be real? Much like how when you wake up in the morning and realize that you were dreaming, that's much like the process of liberating from the illusion of this reality. Each indriya or the sense organs of sight and hearing are all immersed in a new experience in a VR simulation. And this can translate then to the realization that through meditation, in a sensorially depriving way when we retreat inwardly, we can also turn off this game console of our bodies for a time to wake up to the deeper truths that we are normally asleep to. It's only through meditation that you can gain full control over Maya 
and use it for the purpose of pleasure and individuation. Otherwise, when you use it, it will tend to go out of control and deceive you, further entrapping you under its power. So Swati natives aren't afraid to play with illusions because essentially that's all there is. And they're more interested in kind of individuating out and controlling this illusion in which we're all contained. Illusion is really their special realm. And it's their desire to immerse an illusion in general, enjoy it, whether it's the illusions that they're creating, the grand illusions, illusions that someone else have created. They're fascinated, for example, with this video gaming process, the process of creating a world full of environments, playing a, a false character, breathing life into that character, animating with the prana and the life force. Bhuvaneshwari improves moon because our moon's nakshatra kind of shows what kind of software or game we wanted to run because it's our sense organ. So if we have moon issues, we begin falling under K2 and not wanting to play or learn through play because K2 specifically afflicts moon. He is the impulse to remove ourselves from play or illusion, and so makes us hate our own sense organs and the program that we are running and that we incarnated into, and the destiny that we should be pursuing. Saying the Hreem Bija brings light and joy to the moon, it makes it want to experience and learn from the fun game that reality can be. It's like our personal moon is our specific VR game that we have on our head, and also the limitations and rules of this game are shown by certain moon placements giving certain desires, limitations, personality quirks. Some of the earliest video games were actually created by the military in order to train people to fly planes or for educational training experiences that are expensive or too risky to actually do but can be perfected and mastered in a kind of controlled simulation. When a person understands the secrets behind this nakshatra, they are able to undergo certain training programs in their dreams or through technology create these kind of training programs for themselves and for others that then give them real life talents and skills. That kind of scene shows the reason why Swati Moon individuals are the top video game designers and also one of the most amazing and beneficial ways that a person can use this nakshatra for their own benefit which is creating mini illusions um, that are safe for learning within our grand illusion and understanding that learning is the purpose of this grand illusion as well. It's the newest addition to the studio it's a video game that allows you to use a real compound bow and practice bow hunting on the astral plane you can do the same thing with the vr for example and craft entire cities towns or illusory experiences and enter into them to learn to train yourself to tap into hidden knowledge which is just one of the things that you can do if you gain full control over projecting your consciousness which allows you to lucid dream or astrally project it is said in the swati myth that the wind of swati desired may i win the freedom to move as i wish in all the worlds and things such as astral projection, lucid dreaming, and video games or virtual reality really give this power. In spiritual practice, Swati ties closely to the practice of lucid dreaming, specifically dream yoga. This differs from the viewpoints on dreams that I described in the Hasta Nakshatra video where an individual is quite weighed down in Virgo, so they're very fixated on the process of just trying to integrate meaning and transfer understanding from the unconscious to the conscious mind. So they're looking for dream symbolism in their personal projections. The Swati stage of dream practice though isn't about interpretation it's lucid because it's not studying the projections of the dreams itself but seeing past these illusory projections of the dream world and dissolving them realizing you are dreaming and then being able to control your projections instead be able to control the dream instead go where you want do what you want build worlds and in the highest practice even have desired experiences such as meditating on the astral plane and having a glimpse of the clear light of reality void of its illusions. Again, this is really no different from the process of liberating the physical world where you also need to wake up and realize you are dreaming and are immersed in illusion or you will do so at the time of death. For example, one of the main recommended teachings to trigger lucid dreaming experiences in both Tibetan dream yoga as well as in the West is to constantly question throughout the day if you are dreaming, to actually look around you and genuinely imagine and feel and truly believe that you're dreaming and to be in awe at the different things that you can experience around you and how real everything seems to you. This is real? When I touch that it feels wood. very real. Another thing is to lay in bed and to look back on your memories of the day before falling asleep and see those memories as a dream because essentially they are inherently dreamlike in nature. One of the main teachers on the subject of Tibetan dream yoga in the modern world is Tenzin Wangyal Rinpoche who has Swati Moon. Say to yourself, tell to yourself, this is a dream. These are a dream. These feelings, thoughts, emotions, pain, 
They all are just dreams. Help us to awake from this dream of ignorance. If you if you're not able to be conscious of in your dream, then you are not able to be conscious in your conduct. If you're not able to be conscious in your conduct, means behavior, waking behavior, you're not able to be aware in your meditation. If you're not able to be aware in your meditation, then you're not able to be aware in the pardo. And if you say these are like a dream, slowly you feel a little more space. You're, you're waking up. When you're experiencing a space, when you're aware of that space, you're waking up, you're conscious. You feel a little more separation from the story. You feel a flexibility. You feel a power. You feel that you can change and transform. In the dream yoga teachings, it talks about if you are dreaming uh, water, water is uh, like a river or something like that. It's trying to yeah, t- you take, take you away. And you say, this is a dream. I can become a water. In this way, in practice, it's that consciousness is the same and one's level of awareness is apparent in both dream life and in waking life and that your reaction to things on the astral in many ways shows your deepest nature and your true amount of ignorance, showing how you will react in the after death state. The teaching of Swati in relation to illusion here is that dream yoga brings more awareness to dreams at nighttime it brings more awareness to the dreamlike nature of your daily reality and brings more awareness to the bardo states the after death state on another note in a portion of his book he explains that when one of the tibetan masters was receiving teachings in the dream state the goddess who was instructing him touched his foot with a scarf that had the yam bija on it and it made him realize again his physical body so that was an interesting note as a sound of the interplay between the realms and how yam is tied to vayu These ideas are very interestingly expanded on in art in the modern world in the film Science of Sleep, directed by Swati Moon Michelle Gondry, who frequently works with Bjork and even originally wanted her to star as the woman in the film. The film is full of lucid dream sequences and is about a man whose vivid dreams and imagination often interfere with his ability to interact with reality. Tonight, I'll show you how dreams are prepared. Love, friendships, relationships, and all those ships. Hello? Are you trying to mock me on the air? Stefan has always confused his dreams with reality. And you have a serious problem of distorting reality. Swati and being very immersed in sensorial energetic projections is highly, highly imaginative and is childlike in that manner, as you'll see more and more as we go. Much like how children get immersed in video games like Swati people do, or how children can breathe life into the toys that they play with and can see their dollhouse as a real mini universe, this is how Swati is throughout its whole life. You can even understand the very imagination-oriented nature of Swati and that the idea for this film actually came about when Gondry asked a 10-year-old to make up a bedtime story. This sheds some light on the dangerous element of Swati, which is getting so lost in these illusory realities such as video games that you're actually cut off from the life force prana of the primary sustaining illusion of what you and I are contained, and you get lost into empty lifeless worlds, or you get lost in lucid dreaming in its negative state, which is when you do not use the opportunity for liberation and increased awareness, but you instead get lost running around all night in your own faulty and impure projections, escaping this reality, almost diving too much into your own individual individualistic projections um, of the headless Rahu. I know a Swati man in his 50s who still plays video games with all of his spare time and so it's important that they don't become too obsessed with stimulation and enjoying the senses in this imaginative almost childlike way that they start to disconnect from reality. There's a story of an Aghori that could create the atmosphere of the cremation ground wherever he went. So you could be sitting in your living room for example and he could make you start to smell the smell of burning humans Um, hear the jackals howling and crows cawing, etc. And this is an example of what is done with the mastery over the Hreem Bija, which allows you to influence the space around you and how people perceive that space however you desire, because it's made up out of your own senses. When you can cast a powerful illusion with this Bija, it's like you can put on a VR helmet or put one on someone else and experience or have them experience 
with the senses whatever you want. Swati's obsession with these ideas of Bhuvaneshwari, so space, earth, atmosphere, and the realities within it, the understanding that size is an illusion as well as I talked about, also makes them very creative regarding spaces and objects, whether big or small. Coming from the viewpoint of Bhuvaneshwari, within them they are filled with this imagination and illusion that they project onto all kinds of objects, like the world is full of toys that pull on the senses in different ways. For this reason, Swati natives are some of the primary people to build little worlds or fake little objects, even apart from computer programs. When you're working with puppets like these dogs, it takes a lot of experience to know how to really bring a face to life. Even if you have the best sets and the best puppets and you're all ready to go, the animator is really the one who has to go behind a black curtain and turn the scene into something that has life and has emotion and has vitality. Okay, but you know the, the, the forest inside the boat? That's a, that, I don't know, that's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do yeah? it. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. Okay, so I'll go get my dad's old camera and we can make an animated film of the forest inside the boat looking for its mother. Oh, and, and, the, and the, the leaves grow and the wind catches in them and then the, the boat takes off. You yeah. make the sea, okay? Uh, okay, yeah, well, we can do it with, uh, with layers of, uh, of paper like this, uh, you know, like this, and they move in, di in opposite directions, you know? Yep. Cellophane. Oh, no, 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 try it again, try it again, wrong chord. No, wrong chord, try it again. Michelle Gondry then, who Swati Moon is often accused of being a Wes Anderson imitator. And Wes Anderson, the very famous kind of hipster director, is also a Swati Moon native. And on a side note, Wes Anderson always casts his Swati Moon best friend since college, Owen Wilson, as I show in most of my videos that people of the same nakshatra, especially directors, really like to cast people of their same moon nakshatra as kind of a projection of themselves into the film. Anderson's films are characterized by their intense focus on an imaginary looking childlike aesthetic and a strong focus on production design over anything else, purposefully designs that look fake or imaginary. He's known for creating micro worlds on his sets, also called shoebox sets, focusing on all the intricate details of the atmosphere, like a manifestation of Bhuvaneshwari in the way that she created all the worlds, like Satyalok, etc. Both Gondry and Anderson bringing out their um, technology focused childlike and imaginative crafty nature have also worked in animation as well as with puppets etc in films really breathing life into these little illusions i've switched the t tv off and now i want to see how it operates how it can can make put me into all those weird situations this is what it looks like look at this this looks like a city like a little model of a city and all the houses which are here, and streets. This is maybe an elevator to go up, up there. It's interesting as well in relation to its childlike nature and attention to the environment that Swati, as well as Punarvasu, which I'll explore another time, is also a major influence in alternative forms of education that are more child-centered, imagination-focused, and stress completely a child's personal connection to his or her environment. In the education world, there are two particularly well-known, more environment-focused approaches to learning, making classrooms into micro-worlds, and that believe that the majority of learning comes not through um, structure and telling kids what to do, but through play and letting children have open-ended play with their little illusory environments of the classroom. Montessori schools, which focus on immersing the child in real-life hands-on experiences and open-ended play, as well as Waldorf schools, which focus on immersing the child in imagination and fantasy as much as possible, and rejecting to even teach math or reading until um, later where they believe that fantasy will serve as the foundation for being able to learn more structured ideas. Montessori was created by Maria Montessori, who had Swati Moon. The Waldorf method was created by Swati Ascendant and Shadabahisha son native Rudolf Steiner, and that method emphasizes the child simply learning through their own playful imaginative projections and emphasizes children's creativity such as giving the children very basic minimalist toys so that most of the playing happens through the child's own mind and through their energetic projections and not through the power of the objects. 
or the influence of the objects on the child's mind. And both emphasize the child learning in a home-like environment, like the nurturing nature of Bhuvaneshwari. I have even heard that a common practice in Waldorf classrooms is that a teacher will have a child share his or her dream from the night before with the class, and the class then reenacts that dream like a play. Additionally, the Bjork music app that I mentioned earlier was something that she used and wanted to design specifically to show school children how to tangibly interact with sound and music creation in a simple way, again emphasizing this idea of learning through play, through creativity, through an open-ended, hands-on experience. And something traditional that ties to this is that the deity Shashti is worshipped for childbirth and she's also worshipped with the Bija Hreem. Essentially, babies in their very vulnerable state are susceptible to get eaten by the darkness and stillness of Ketu, of Mula, the inertia of that old forest pulling them back into the unshaped void of creation. When a baby is born, you want to protect it from Mula or Lilith, who makes the baby's soul feel pressure to not undergo or participate in illusion or play, but instead slip into that inertia. So this is why Hreem is also a bija that makes the breast large and makes women very nourishing and supportive, as it's the bija of light and activity which drives away the darkness and stillness of Mula Nakshatra. Reciting this mantra when you are a mother makes you able to bring your child into the world in the best way through making reality really fun for them and teaching them how to learn through enjoying themselves and learn through play. Reciting Hreem nourishes the baby and prevents it from withdrawing from the world and starting to slip back to the dark void of Ketu, so it's a very protective bija for a baby. Considering those who are deluded by Maya, it's important to understand that it's she who conceals the truth from them, not out of cruelty or malice, but in a more motherly sense, such as these classrooms that I mentioned on a big scale or the um, computer programs Swati natives make to help you learn how to do something in a safe way. The energy of Swati create these illusions in order that souls can grow and learn experience and eventually have the opportunity of gaining self-awareness and becoming creators of their own universe. This is why in Sri Vidya it explains that the purpose of reality is pure pleasure, nothing more, nothing less. But back to prana and its relation to the atmosphere and these natives fixation on creating environments. You can also see this in Swati natives like Kylie Jenner who are known for enjoyment of huge homes and luxurious cars. Their vast magnetic feminine space makes it so that when a child is going to be born into a quite wealthy, well-established, rich family, that child often has swati nakshatra. And so they are often archetypally depicted as gentle socialites, um, with Shatabahisha as the more sinister ones, which I'll explore in another video. And I explored this element to their style in my series of nakshatra fashion. Kylie Jenner is an example of this in that people get really upset that she is referred to as self-made when she was born into a family with a lot of connections but I'll explore that soon in my wealth video. Other famous Swati socialites and heiresses, daughters of the rich and famous and powerful, include Lillian Betancourt, the daughter of the founder of L'Oreal, who died as the richest woman in the world, Lily Rose Depp with Swati Moon, the daughter of Johnny Depp and Vanessa Paradis, Grace Kelly was Swati ascendant, who married a prince, and together they had a Swati Moon daughter, Caroline, Princess of Hanover, and then Princess Caroline's daughter, Princess Alexandra, has Swati Moon as well. Marie Antoinette, known for her lavish lifestyle, had Swati son. Malia Obama and Ivanka Trump both have Swati primary placements, etc. They're often depicted in films as sensorial, pleasure-loving socialites, such as Margot Robbie in Wolf of Wall Street. I have been mad at you, but I just had that driving range sodded with Bermuda grass, oh, Jordan, my and God. now you fucking Bermuda wrecked grass. it. No, you didn't research the whole thing and deal with the fucking golf course people. Oh! What a Greek tragedy, honey, oh my God. You probably had to pay them in cash with your hands. What a fucking burden. And actually do some work besides swiping my fucking credit card all day, huh? Because I can't keep track of your professions, honey. Because last month you were a wine connoisseur. Now you're an aspiring landscape architect. Let me get that right. Grace Kelly in High Society. Catherine Hepburn in Philadelphia Story, which High Society is a remake of. And so it's interesting that that role was played by Swati women twice in a row, as well as the 
this next chapter being the next chapter of socialites like Edie Sedgwick and Olivia Palermo. These women relate to social norms as all Rahu next chapters do. Ardra focused on criticizing them while Swati is focused on enjoying the pleasantries of social life. Casanova, for example, had Ketu and Swati and also relates to these pleasantries of social enjoyments and norms, his writings being regarded as one of the most authentic sources of the customs and norms of European social life in the 18th century. Relating to the environment, you can literally notice with Swati natives in both kind of their aura and their attention, as well as their actual minds, their minds tend to be on the periphery. They're always observing their surroundings, especially the physical structure of the environment to enjoy it and beautify it. Swati people um, will know every place, every restaurant, details of every room, a lot about interior design. A lot of the men tend to lean towards carpentry. Looks like somebody got a name, Woodshop. <laughs> Yeah, it's always been kind of a hobby. I whittled that out of beech wood. Huh, it's beautiful. So, yeah. now I just put a fresh coat of lacquer on this this morning, so bear with me with the fumes. That's incredible. Thank you. Roses, Deb's favorite. Yes, That's right. It's beautiful, the little holes of her candles. Like well, exactly, and then later they'll collect rainfall. Must have taken forever to build. Yeah, not too bad, about 70 hours. Which isn't bad considering I carved it all by hand from one piece of wood. Whereas Shadow Bahisha is observing individuals within the environment because it's more about regulation and control while Swati is about enjoyment. Shadow Bahisha people will know, for example, if someone weird was in the room, if someone sitting across the room seemed slightly angry or something like that. Whereas if you bring up any place or area or detail of the environment, um, Swati will know it and will know the details of it. What the fuck is this? It's my bag. It's Wonderful. This is not the bag the CIA gave you. Oh, that bag? Yes, that bag. That bag was fugly with a capital fug. Well, it was also designed to conceal fucking poison that we're going to smuggle into a foreign country. Kim is a super fan. He knows I take fashion risks. In contrast, in Shadow Bahisha, because it's Rahu mixed with Saturn, there's a more sinister undertone because Saturn is the regulating force on society whose job is to create rules, regulations, and put the egos down of the common people in, in order that law and order can be maintained. This is why Shadow Bahisha and Ardra are demonic nakshatras, whereas Swati is angelic and divine and focused on pleasure and enjoyment of the senses because it's Rahu mixed with Venus that go together quite harmonically. It's for this reason that Swati rolls using Maya or illusion to create harmony, beauty, and pleasure, and also makes these natives obsessive about their physical environments and surroundings. With unprecedented floor-to-ceiling windows ranging from 10 to 16 feet high, every room here provides you with views that are inspirational. So now I'm going to talk more about their literal personalities. The power of Swati, of course, relates to its god Vayu and is Pradhavamsa Shakti, which is the power to scatter like the wind. A symbol of this next chapter is a young sprout, a young plant shoot, shaking in the wind. These significations of the movable, changeable, and gentle nature of Swati and its relation to wind are shown in art in another interesting, almost funny pattern similar to the way that they are associated with eggs a lot. There's a famous scene in the film American Beauty written by Libra Moo, possibly Swati native depending on birth time, Alan Ball, in which a man comments on the beauty of a plastic bag blowing in the wind. This seemed to really catch and inspire Swati natives to reuse this metaphor multiple times due to their unconscious connection and relating to um, its nature. This metaphor is often connected to Swati son and ascendant native Katy Perry's song Firework. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag drifting through the wind wanting to start again? The other two places that this is referenced in popular culture is in the Swati Ascendant native James Franco's film, The Interview, where he loves the song and sings it to win over Kim Jong-un. Like a plastic bag, drifting through the wind, wanting to start again. <laughs> Feel so paper thin, just like a house of cards, <laughs> one blow from caving in. And then in Family Guy, written by Swati Sun and Moon native Seth MacFarlane, um, making fun of it again. Don't miss a moment. I got it. <gasps> Look, it's dancing with me. It's like there's this incredibly benevolent force that wants me to know there's no reason to be afraid. Sometimes there's so much beauty in the world it makes my heart burst. 
mountains. So it's just interesting how much Swati people kind of contemplate and relate to this metaphor, even if just finding it kind of funny and interesting. Swati in relating to space is really about amplifying whoever it is around, um, supporting due to its tie to the illusory but nourishing energy and its placement in Libra constellation of the natural seventh house of dissolving the ego into others. So it's this energy that always actually reinforces whoever it is with and reinforces the individuality and identity of the person that it's with due to its tie to individuation but also to the seventh house. Both Swati natives Owen Wilson and Matthew McConaughey have repeating catchphrases that are both focused on amplifying and pumping up others or expressing an easygoing mentality and churning the energy in the room. It's gonna be our honeymoon. Wow! <laughs> wow! Yeah! Wow! Right? Yeah. Great. Thanks. Wow! Flippers and all. Wow! 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 This is a nice boat. Wow! I swear I got screwed on the old bedroom selection. Every room's like four times as big as mine. Wow! No wonder she wanted to leave. Wow! That's pretty good. Wow! Wow! All right, let's rock and roll. Yeah. All right. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right, man. All right, all right, all right. All right, everybody. People often think that this means that Swati natives themselves act, are actually very individualistic or loners or they kind of go against the norms, but actually these natives often project that focus on independence towards supporting others through relationships due to its relation to Libra and Saturn in service before really ever cultivating their own individuality. It's a very devoted and feminine nakshatra. This energy that they show is the churning up, pumping up energy towards people in conversation and relationships. Relationships. You deserve it. Can you look at this guy? I'm gonna hug him. What? Come here. Come here. I forgive you, alright? Hey. Okay. I forgive you. Come here, you big liar. Alright. I need a real journalist. Aaron, you are the Samwise Gamgee to my Frodo Baggins. You are the Gandalf to my Bilbo Baggins. This guy. My instinct is to hug you right now. Good night. I don't know what his issues are. Oh my, oh my, oh I feel my like God. I'm so normal. I have a little surprise. Ta da! Is that our Christmas card? It's all of you! It says happy holidays and everything. Their ability to amplify energy is also why it was one of the richest nakshatras in my millionaire survey that I'm going to release soon because it has space to take any bit of money and then amplify it through smart investments and things like that, like how Kylie Jenner made the most out of her fame of any of her sisters, even surpassing Kim in wealth by a ton. And this is also why Cream is my top recommended bija that I give in one of my lessons in my female path course out of all the options for women, the, mo the one that I recommend most for women in relationships because it functions to amplify the power of her male partner. Swati people in their supportive passivity actually gain energy to eventually individuate this way by unconsciously forcing you into the position where you have to assert on them all the time just like how i explained um the the yin nature that their eyes kind of show which is actually why prana in this nakshatra is actually associated with martial arts because in soft martial arts for example which are said to be more powerful than harsh ones yin energy is used where you force your attacker to actually assert on you and you absorb all of their projecting energy but don't become harmed and don't have to exert or use a lot of your own energy so swati people tend to ask many many questions and always put themselves in in a place of kind of intellectual passivity in conversation so in swati men and women churning people to just discharge energy towards them they're like seducing people in this rahu sense into projecting more and more energy e either to explaining things to them or swati natives will be fine with saying something and having people correct them wow and how'd that affect you with guys how is it that every morning i wake up as me and not as someone else oh yeah it's, this is weird being me. What is it like being you? Right, what's what I'm saying? It's like, why am I me every day? Why? How does that happen? <laughs> You've ruined my favorite club. Thanks a lot. Did we win? I think we won. What were we trying to do? I learned so much today. And so Swati natives do this themselves by unconsciously acting almost like they're hypnotized by the person that they're talking to, almost seeming high with how interested they are in the people around them, how encouraging they are, 
how kind of lighthearted and gentle and excitable they are. Swati people have this kind of sense of humor and, and even attraction to random objects or things that most people only have when they're like high on drugs, for example. That's how they'll be depicted in, in films a lot of the time. This is because they have so much yin energy that many things fascinate and interest them. And this is also why they are generally very happy and gentle people. Down Mount Vesuvius when suddenly I slip and I start to fall. And I mean, I'm about to die, just falling. Ah, ah, I'll never forget the terror. When suddenly I remember, holy shit, Hansel, haven't you been smoking peyote for six straight days? And couldn't some of this maybe be in your mind? It was. I'll spark up a joint if you keep talking. <laughs> People in general like taking drugs because it's a way of increasing one's yin energy. And so Swati people kind of live in that state in a certain sense of having heightened interest in the things around them. But only some people realize that you can cultivate yin energy and experience in a much more deeper and powerful way that produces a, a more powerful high than drugs if you learn how to meditate properly and absorb yin energy in other ways. This kind of behavior can be seen in the extremely gentle, good-hearted, and airheaded way that James Franco acts towards Seth Rogen in films where he will just jump to repeat what Seth says and to support and pump up every thoughts even when you get the feeling that James doesn't even understand them. We're just gonna, we're just gonna talk. By all means. She is so cool. You don't see what's happening and it's so obvious. It's crazy, what? man. They're honeypotting us. Do you actually think she just so happens to have everything you find attractive? Bangs, giant tits, glasses. They're fake, man. Fake glasses? That I know what you did to me. What? Like the glasses honeycombed me. What does that even mean? You honey potted him. It's honey pot. You honey potted. You honey potted. Uh, him. No, mm -hmm. I didn't. He said a lot of stupid shit in the last ten minutes, but for reals, you did honey pot him. It's very offensive because basically, if you think about what you're saying to me, you're saying because I'm a girl and because I'm attractive, my only use for this agency would be to manipulate men. I think it's offensive too, and that's exactly what I said to Aaron. I said that bitch is blind as a bat. Uh, Lovely room. Yeah. Oh, yes. Lovely room. I'm gonna go take a shower now. Okay, okay, I'll take one with you. Why would you take one with you? I'm just making up fake conversations. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. <sighs> you can see this in Swati's son, Matthew McConaughey, typecast as a relaxed, peace-loving hippie type. And this peace-loving type is also exactly like Owen Wilson, who is also portrayed as this constantly, almost annoyingly angelic, kind, kind of simple-minded, or you could even say dumb, gentle support of human. Are you having a hard time sleeping? Yeah. Oh. There we go. Jesus, Henry? Uh, shh, 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 you... shh, shh, he's sleeping. Shh, he's sleeping. I put him in a still point. It's a massage mm -hmm. technique that relaxes the body by gently easing the flow of cerebral spinal fluid. Yeah, look at him. He's gonna wake up feeling so refreshed. I've been studying a lot of Eastern medicine in my downtime. You got a place to stay, right? And we're pretty full no, up. No, not a problem. You. I volunteer at a Southside homeless shelter, so I'll probably stay there and just work the soup kitchen line in the morning. That is so wonderful, Kevin. Yeah, it's funny. I feed them food, but those vagrants and drifters feed my soul, so it works out pretty good for all of us. You can use any word implying Swati's literally airy nature in English to explain it. Airy metaphors like spaced out, airheaded, high, etc. all relate to the way that these natives act. Katy Perry also embodies this archetypal airheaded but endearing behavior supporting the ego of others in her interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson saying like dumb or ditzy things but being passionately supportive and interested and excitable. I thought about it the other day and it, it like kind of made me spin. It's just like we all have different fingerprints. Okay, I get it. Grand design. Will never even exist. So the fact like that- Like sperm. So the few well, of us- Well, is that because there's not enough souls? <laughs> in Swati Ascendant Native Chris Pratt's character in Parks and Rec, is very much like this who Pratt himself described the character as dim-witted and a real idiot, but lovable. Movies. Mutilated bodies. Fake, but fake ones. Candy, dancing, tequila, all kinds of food and snacks. Blood orphans. No blood orphans. I, I don't know what that is. Andrew, I need evidence. Got it. Wait, you don't know what evidence. Ah, right on. Yes, hit me. Next to my desk is a picture of a female politician, Bella Abzug. Get the key that's taped in the back of that picture. It opens up my bottom desk drawer and there are some files Pay attention, where are you looking? Look here, focus here. Get the files in the drawer and then get all of the file boxes in the office. Put the files in the drawer, let's go. No, okay, I'll go with him. I knew a girl who was dating a Swati native who even kind of referred to him almost like a puppy dog, like just adorable, gentle, passive, 
very sweet just kind of be excitable and passionate towards others this supportive nature also becomes very clear when you consider how many talk show hosts have this nakshatra people who are experts at asking questions fueling the ego of their guests and amping up energy and excitement for their guest joe rogan who is just supportive basically of whoever he's talking to about basically anything unless that person says something really harsh um has swati moon this is also like jimmy fallon who has libra moon and i showed in the vishaka video um and could have either of those next chapters of which vishaka is also extremely supportive as well so it shows the nature of libra to be supportive of who you are with whether he has swati or vishaka this is the next chapter of johnny carson one of the most famous talk show hosts of all time as well as craig ferguson and a huge majority of the women on the view Jenny McCarthy, Whoopi Goldberg, Star Jones. In James Franco's very archetypally swatty role in the interview, he even plays a famous talk show host who literally takes down Kim Jong-un through his devotional nature. He hangs out with Kim Jong-un all day and actually forms a real friendship with him, not realizing um, that he's being manipulated, again, because James Franco's portrayed as very airheaded and gentle-hearted in that film. But then, Later in the film, he actually exposes Kim Jong-un as weak to the North Koreans through James Franco's interviewing skills, you know, through amping up his emotions and actually singing that Katy Perry song about the plastic bag to the point where uh, Kim Jong-un can no longer contain his emotions, which is that swatty skill of being extremely warm, amping up the energy and emotions of the people around you and is why so many Swati interviewers become so well known. You can see the supportive nature in less humorous situations as well, more relating to Swati's nature in romance, love, and devotion as the heart of Libra, the natural seventh house. And later when they purchase a home, maybe it'll grace their garden. And that's my sappy romantic idea. <laughs> Remember when we made love in the hot tub? Steph opened up like a flower. You should have seen it. As I said earlier, the bija of prana is yam, and it's in the heart center. Bhuvaneshwari is worshipped on Fridays with the mantra Hreem for a devoted and loving partner, as well as for financial gain. Because the moon is the emblem of devotion, Bhuvaneshwari cures moon disorders um, as she works out of a swati, the star of devotion. To be devoted, you have to have a really strong heart center, to have a great, loving, stable relationship, and that's why swati is in Libra, is worshipped for a partner, and is associated with the heart center. One of swati's sun native Ashwarya Rai's most famous roles is in the film Devdas, where she keeps a lamp Lit, symbolizing this unending devotion that she maintains constantly for this um, destructive partner of hers who fails over and over. This is much like the movie A Star is Born, where Swati Moon Lady Gaga plays a woman unendingly supportive and devoted to her destructive partner played by Bradley Cooper. This kind of devotion and support on her part is also shown to translate into real life in that during the press tour, um, she was made fun of for repeating so many times her praise and thankfulness to him. Be a hundred people in the room and 99 don't believe in you, but I had this one incredible talent with me. And there can be a hundred people in the room and 99 don't believe in you and you just need one to believe in you and that was him, so. You can have a hundred people in the room that are watching you and 99 don't believe in you and one does and that was him, so. You know, there could be a hundred people in the room and 99 don't believe, but all it takes is one. You know, a hundred people can be in a room and 99 don't believe in you and just one person believes in you and it can change everything. And she gushes about him in almost any interview, really engaging in that swatty behavior of amping up her partner in this sense, in a creative sense, over herself and turning all the attention and praise towards her partner partner at every chance that she can get. Hanuman is the son of Vayu and is used to remedy Saturn issues. Swati is the exaltation point of Saturn and so relates to service, such as the way that these natives service and support others so passionately, more focused on celebrating the individuality of others to where he forgets to activate his own power. However, another symbol of this next chapter is the red coral, which builds slowly over time through careful collection of energy as these natives do, to where it's established as a bright star just as Swati starts shines brightly and independently in the sky. 
Although Swati is so supportive and devotional, they often rise to incredible heights of stable, mass, growing fame, such as PewDiePie being the top YouTuber for such a long time, Kylie Jenner rising to immense wealth and fame, people like Joe Rogan dominating as like the top podcast. So they have this stability, this growing in power. Swati is the most kind of balanced stage of Rahu where the material needs and the senses need to be focused on. And even if you're fiercely focused and directed towards something mundane, no matter how mundane it is, if you're really just concentrated on that thing, you're still building power, individuality, and abilities that translate to spiritual power because they translate to that kind of discipline and focus that's required. Rahu and Venus go well together here because there's much worse things to be obsessed with, like how Rahu obsesses. Um, there's much worse things to be obsessed with than cultivating material harmony, and that's actually the correct thing to be obsessed with because it builds the proper foundation. If you build a beautiful foundation, as Swati natives do, and focus on minute detail, when you encounter the destructive transformational energies of a real spirituality, only your ego will get destroyed, not you, because you have that foundation, which is also why Rahu is exalted in the stabilizing and abundant Rohini nakshatra that's contained in um, the other Venus Rashi, Taurus. Rahu needs the stable enjoyment-based energy to function correctly. If you don't master the material world first, you will kind of um, get destroyed fully when you dive into spirituality, not just your ego. Some final notes is that if a woman says Hreem, because the female path is lunar, she will be able to align with the solar force, the Purusha, the observer that projected her for enjoyment, and won't allow her to be severed from it. That also ties to why Hreem is the bija of the breath of life or vital force, because if you understand how to use all the mysteries behind it, it's said that the male force can create female elementals and illusions, and that they are said to become human women. That's kind of a mystery of the Hreem bija. This is somewhat described in the tale of the little mermaid about a water elemental trying to become a human through devotion to a man. In the Disney film of this movie, Ariel was voiced by a Swati moon woman and I'll be covering that in a future fairy tale video. In some lineages, to initiate a woman when she's participating in Kali Puja, for example, you initiate her as a man by whispering cream in her ear. But to do this, the man has to be above Maya and controlling Maya for it to work or he would be deluded by her because Bhuvaneshwari would animate her and do what she does, which is to begin concealing the truth from him. A woman who is initiated by a man who has full control over Maya by having him whisper this mantra in her ear is said to be able to achieve self-realization instantly through her interaction with him and her understanding of her path because she'll suddenly realize what she is which is why the female path is more about not having effort more about liberating and removing restrictions and just realizing your true nature as maya whereas the male path takes a lot of um, control so when he whispers cream in her ear she'll suddenly realize what she is which is actually maya and begin to do the female function of um, deceiving others, seducing others, and playing with others in this cosmic sense, both teaching and concealing the truth from them, which is what Maya really does. It's the paradox that by trying to conceal the truth and deceiving people, they go through experiences where they can eventually learn the truth and penetrate through the illusion, and through having the skill to do that, they become the god of their own universe themselves, giving things the breath of life just like God does, which is why in Tantra and Thelema in the West, it's taught not to avoid Maya or projection of energy into matter, but to gain full control over it and become equal to God like the individuating star of Swati, which then allows us to do whatever is our true will and have true and total freedom. Thank you so much for watching this video. I would love to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. I have a few different options for that now because I have a female path course and in that way we can work one-on-one -on -one each week. You can find the link for that in the description box. And then of course I have astrological chart services if you would like me to explore your chart and all your placements and nakshatras and how they weave together to create the uniqueness of you and your path and destiny. Also, please don't forget to interact with this video. However much you interact with it, it helps it to grow. So I'd love to read your comments. I would love if you would not forget to give it a thumbs up if you watched this huge video that took me so long to create. And also, um, please share it with any Swati natives you know or anyone who would like this kind of modern and astrological research that I am doing. And of course, hit the subscribe button to see my videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.